morning to you. HawkFanatic.com brought to you by Dr. Lance Forbes, Diamond Dental in Cedar Rapids. Streets Maintenance, the Oxyoke Inn in the Amanas with their great Sunday brunch. Premier Automotive in North Liberty. Hertine and Stocker Jewelers 101 South Dubuque Street, downtown Iowa City. The Midtown Family Restaurants. Supel's Flowers, home of 1-800-800-ROSE. Supel's Building and Remodeling, GT Car and his great crew. Mike's E-Keys for Cars, Steve Anderson, Hawkeye Title and Settlement, and Patrick Eads, and the whole gang at Deary Brothers Ford on Mormon Trek. Here's Tom Suter, and from hawkfanatic.com, it's Pat Hardy. It is. Get up a beautiful way. snowy morning here. Yeah, and it's warm enough where it's not going to do, not going to matter. It's not yeah. slippery. Nope, it's not. It's thirty-two now. So. Cedar Rapids not so good. No, it's 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 very slippery in Cedar Rapids and has been. They've got they've been getting snow all morning. So yeah. we're on the southern edge and we're going to miss it again, huh? Yes. Yeah. Seems like exactly. that's been a common theme. It yeah. has. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we're not going to get any significant snow. No. Wow. How much does Cedar Rapids have? Um, I don't know how much they have. Twenty but inches. They, they, they've got. It's very slick. Thirty. And there've been a, a number of accidents. And again, there was a, a school bus car uh, collision. Uh, someone in the car was injured. There was no, no kids. kids on the school well, bus. I heard that they got. We're going to get four to eight inches of snow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't know if they're going to get eight you inches guys, of snow. But no, it said four to eight. I thought yeah. it was. Maybe yeah. heard it here. Yeah. Yeah, the, that's the inches forecast. Inches. Yeah, we're not just, I don't, not, not we're for not, us. And we're not getting any accumulation. Interesting. Hello. Hello. Will they be able to play that softball game this afternoon? Probably. I mean, if it. It's yeah, going to be in the 40s. And it's and they're supposed to stop by. One o'clock. Yeah, I mean, the softball game by then. Yeah, if it's in the 40s, they'll play. Yeah. 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 Okay, and what about um, our tickets for the women's game on. Saturday, are they going to mail those to us, or do we have to go pick them up? I mean, you you don't have a smartphone, do you? Yeah, I have a smartphone, well, but I'm not good at that, picking up anything digital. So did they say, so did you order they paper they tickets? They would mail them, but I haven't gotten mine yet. I would check with the ticket office, because, I mean, I've had mine for... A, a long time. Don't you have somebody that could... In my, and they're electronic, but I've had them for a long time. Do you have somebody that could show you how to get it on your phone? Oh, they have somebody that could show me, but my brain doesn't Dallas work does that it. way. Dallas does all that stuff for me. Yeah. I don't well, handle that digital I, stuff I either. need somebody that would... You need your own Dallas. ...do it for me. Well, yeah. call, call the ticket office, because did you request paper tickets? Yeah, I requested paper tickets, and they said they would mail them. And but I had a friend went in and picked his up, but I thought they'd be here by now. Well, but it's I would call them if I were you. It's, it's getting pretty close. Well, you might want to go in. Yes, yes. I mean they are having press conferences. Though I like I was having a press conference today at ten thirty, which I will not be at because of this show. But Susan Harmon will be there covering it for us. But you might want to go in there, Karn. Go in there and just check with them. Or there. check with them and see if they mailed them out. Or, and or riot. You can always yes, riot if things don't go the way you like. What do you think, Captain? Riot? Yeah. Would you riot? riot? Create a fuss. Yeah. Only by myself? I yeah, need riot. more people than just me. Riot. Solo rage. Yeah. <laughs> we just kicked this old lady out and told her, no more. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck. I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay. Well, thanks. But check yeah. on it. Yeah. yeah. I think at this right. stage she may just have to drive in. Yeah, because the mail is not moving normally. No, it isn't. Oh, so. no. I mean, like I said, I mean... If you don't mail something two weeks before it's due, maybe even more, there's a chance you won't get it there in time. But the problem is you don't get – lots of times I'll get stuff like an insurance payment I have to make or my mortgage. I do my mortgage over the phone, but if I was to mail it, there's times where I get it like maybe 13, 14 days before it's due again. And you don't have enough – it's just it's, – I know. It's it's running But small. I will say every time I've had a late fee because of mail, they – Glad they drop it right away. They well, don't put up any fuss. And it's not the it's not the postal carriers. It's not the people working here. It's the fact that they took out all the sorting machines and things yeah, are just to, going slow everywhere. I mean, I had a bill that took over a month to get from here to Birmingham, yeah. Alabama. 
So I ended, up having, I ended up making a double payment because I didn't want, I wanted to avoid having a late fee or whatever. But then they called me or they let me know that it finally came. It took like five, four weeks to go to Birmingham, Alabama through the mail. It never got lost. It just kept. Well, we mailed out uh, Justin Roberts' uh, check for what he does for us uh, on Friday, and he just got it yesterday. And he Cedar Rapids. Well, my medical insurance and, and obviously everything do, goes to Cedar Rapids. My medical insurance goes to Des Moines. I'm mailing it out today. Which what's today? The twenty second. Yeah, yeah. I, normally, if you mailed something in, from Iowa City, it would get there probably by Monday, by next month. Oh yeah. Now I want to at least give myself eight days because you just never know. Because you yeah. know, I mean, the moment you're late with your medical insurance, they what do they drop you? And so yeah, I don't want to take any chances. Okay. But, but uh, yeah, Karen, I would definitely drive in or have somebody drive you in. And um, and because at the stage, I don't know what else. Wait, hope yeah. that it comes in the mail today or tomorrow. Well, but, that's what you is banking on, and I, I would be I would, nervous doing that. I would be nervous, too. May says uh, that Ely uh, has had uh, 1.4 inches of snow. Hiawatha, uh, 3 inches of snow. So Okay. That's from May. So it's going to be a rough morning, and it'll all melt off this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Even that stuff up there. Yeah. How warm is it going to get in Cedar Rapids today? Get into Same the forties. The forties. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This will be gone by this afternoon. Yeah. Low forties. Yeah. High forties here. Yeah. So. Uh, so. So enough with the weather. Are we done? I hope so. Well, uh, the advisory meeting regarding the coolest thing made in Iowa has been canceled. Because of the weather. Because of the weather. I never. Never heard of such a thing. I never heard of it either. The coolest thing but, made in Iowa. Uh, yeah, but uh, it, I thought it was this. I thought canceled. it was this. The, the morning show was the coolest. Yeah, I thing thought made so. Too. It is. That's what I've been told since I got here. <laughs> what, five minutes ago, what, what you? What were you told that? <laughs> Hello. Starting in two thousand eight. <laughs> morning, guys. Good morning. It's kind of warm up here in the hood or whatever. No bullets are flying and stuff. So <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's his uh, biggest fan. <laughs> Have a good day. All right. All right. That was a very important phone call. <laughs> did, you, did you know who that was? Uh, fruit, fruit pie. pie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know fruit pie. Uh, yeah. But he he liked his joke, didn't he? <laughs> now, Fruit Pie could have given us a, a weather update, <laughs> well, but chose not to. That's okay. <laughs> Let's move on. What's your favorite fruit pie? Mine would be peach. <laughs> Uh, chair, I, I like cherry. I only like two kinds of pie, basically, coconut cream <laughs> and cherry. Don't even go there. I don't. I, 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 I don't. Even. I just peach pie. I don't think I could oh. make it through a piece. Oh God, I love peach pie. I like apple. Without, apple I like I apple. Don't, don't peach, like apple. Peach, cherry, and apple. I, How can't oh. you like apple? Oh, I love apple pie, it's, 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 especially with, if so it's got like the, the right cinnamon mix into it. Right cinnamon mix yep. and a big scoop of Van- vanilla, vanilla ice, cream. ice cream. Well, vanilla ice cream works with all three of those types. Yeah. Now, I can eat a, a piece of apple pie with How about, do you like, like rhubarb pie? No. No, I don't either. Um, how about pecan pie? Um, uh-uh. A little too sweet. It is uh, a sweet, but, man, my mom made some really good pecan pie, but she also made rhubarb pie, and I would never even try it. Now, Ann makes a pumpkin chiffon pie that is lighter than normal pumpkin pie, and it's it's real good. I don't mind pumpkin pie as I long as it's got, it's got whipped pie. cream on it. And yeah. I don't, I well, lots yeah. of whipped cream. I'm not a big pump, pumpkin pie Not really. Pie oh, I love pumpkin yeah. pie, but I love uh, uh, pumpkin cream pie. That's, that's but those good. things, those half little pies at hy V, you see they have yeah. them, Sometimes they're so tempting, but like the peach one, then I'll look at it. Okay, if I was to eat all this in a in a drunken session at night, that would be my my food, calories for like it's like like two thousand calories. The half, just the half thing of pie in a drunken session. Well, and they have those ones at the cash register in the little cardboard know, boxes. Those well, are only like four hundred calories. I know, right but there. they're like this big too. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. just But no, I'm just being honest, Captain. I mean. Uh, I fell asleep. I mean, I I shouldn't have opened. I had what I I had, I opened up a fourth beer, but didn't finish it. But the three that I had, along with food, was enough to cause me to fall asleep at halftime of the Drake, the Drake um, Washington State game, and I missed the whole second half. I didn't wake up till two again. I did not have a good feeling though. It just never no. felt like Drake no. was going to win that game. It just never did. I mean, they ended up losing by five or four. Was it sixty-five, sixty-one? By I, I think that's it. Right. Just never felt like in the first half though that Drake was better than that team. And that team will give Iowa State some trouble. 
But, man, Iowa State's defense is just – I mean, their defense just – at the start of that game last night, I, I mean, they were overwhelming. I've never seen a team defend the way they do. It's yeah. incredible. Hello. Hey, guys. Uh, I was just calling to give you a little bit of a weather update. Yeah. I'm currently driving south from Cedar Rapids to Iowa City. Uh, it, visibility is pretty bad up Cedar Rapids. Uh, you know, it's coming down pretty steadily. Luckily, there's not a ton of cars in the ditch, but – there, there are a few smattering of them here and there. But basically, as you get to mile marker 50, uh, and which is basically right about the first North Liberty exit as you're heading south, uh-huh. visibility really clears up a lot. Wow. So we're just right on the line. Yep. We're just right on yeah. the lucky All side right, of the line. Well, so thank, thank you. Thanks Appreciate for the update. That. Drive safe. Yeah. Thank you. No, that's good to hear. I mean, we are... And it's going, it's going northeast, right? So yeah. it's literally going to, it's like a snake slithering right by us in a way. It's, we've just, for some reason. We've been like this for like a year and a half. Yeah. I mean, it's just weird. Yeah. We've missed a lot of crap. And it's you, but we've also missed it south too, though. It hasn't always been yeah, north. Yeah, no. We've been, I remember you saying, God, Washington's getting slammed. And here Again. we are. Well, <laughs> Washington was getting slammed and, and north of, Cedar, just north of Cedar Rapids and then was here getting we are. slammed. And here we are. Yeah. Weird, well, skating. Let's enjoy it, but but yeah, no, I'm st- I was so much wanting Drake and uh, Iowa me State too. to beat in the second round. Me too, and I would have been cheering for my Bulldogs hard, but I do respect Iowa State because man, they play defense and they are an old, mature team. And you saw Kentucky lost, and John Calipari still in a lot of heat. The thing is, though, he's a, got a thirty-three million dollar buyout. So, but what's happening with Kentucky? He's still recruiting all these five-star guys. Problem is, they're playing teams like Oakland now that have transfer portal guys and guys that have stuck around. Guy. I mean, that guy that made all those threes last night, I don't know if I, – I think they said he was in his fifth year. He's a transfer. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's teams out there in the tournament now that average age 23. I mean, old teams. you got an average team like Kentucky, average age 19. No matter how good those Kentucky guys are potential-wise, that, that's a difference, and we're starting to see this playing well, in this tournament now because of the portal. Well, the other thing is is some of the Kentucky guys are going to be going into well, the well, that's, NBA, too. That's why he keeps having young guys because he, repli- he keeps replacing – draft guys with other draft guys yes. who are being drafted on their potential as much as what they're being drafted on what they're accomplishing That's in college. Right. And it used to work for him. But he's been there 15 years. has only won one national title. I mean, they've been great, but they've not been dominant. You don't no. win just one national title. But in fairness, though, his guys, his really good guys, rarely spend more than two years there. And it's starting to catch up with him because the world around him is changing. And That's right. He was talking on his post game, saying, "You know, we have to decide if we're going to change whether." He goes, "I love the." He goes, "I love teaching these young guys and getting them through high school and what have you, and then setting them up for life in a brief period of time that they spend with me." But now you might see Kentucky hitting the portal harder. They've added some portal additions, but that, I watched that game. I mean, that I mean, it was an upset, of course, but. Oakland was pretty good. I mean, they, I mean, that guy made those were legitimate three. This guy was just hitting shots everywhere. It was incredible. Well, Yesterday's were... my favorite sports day. I think about it. the first full day of the NCAA tournament to me is the best day in sports of everything combined. Today's going to be great too, but today's not as good as yesterday because it's the second day. I always, I always love that. You know, the play and stuff. The day before that but the first full day of ncaa tournament games man yesterday was great it, I, it is fun I and the nothing. women get that today it's today, their yes. first day yes and um no offense to the women but it's not the same as the men's tournament i mean iowa has taken their profile to a level never seen before but um the, a lot of the game i mean you take caitlin clark out of this ncaa tournament i don't think it has near the appeal you think i'm right um she certainly is a huge, huge component. But, I mean, I'm personally more interested in the women. Because of Iowa and Caitlin Clark. Uh, yes. You you weren't five Basically. years ago. I mean, I prior to, uh, I was. Because yeah, but of prior Megan. to her coming here, uh, prior to Megan, I don't, my first 10 years, we never talked about no, basketball. I, I mean, it took them I, to get to an Elite Eight and have national players exactly. of the year. And that's what I'm saying. It'll be interesting when that doesn't happen. When Caitlin's gone. When Caitlin's gone. I'm, I don't think they're going to have the – Maybe they will keep producing national players. It's going to be interesting to see when it goes back to where it was, assuming it does, how the interest how the interest goes. Last night uh, at Wells Fargo Arena, uh, Tim McGraw was in concert, and he wore a, a number 22 jersey out Caitlin there. Caitlin Clark and jersey. People went 
Nuts. And there were probably Iowa State fans in there, too. Oh, I yeah. Assume. Yeah. And so, yeah, no, it is. I mean, she's yeah. a phenomenon. It, it it's is funny. I, I read most of the Wright Thompson story. I mean, it's... it's Isn't it incredible? But it's just so long. It is I, I, I haven't incredibly been able, long. It's 18,000 words. And... It, no, it's brilliantly written. He's a great writer, one of the best out there. But a lot of what's in there is also stuff we know. Is it true? There's a huge part about her picking Iowa over and over. I know all that stuff. Yeah. We've all read. But so for the a lot of for the average Iowa fan, I think there's the one thing. The Ava Jones. It, did you get to that part? Yes, the I read all of it. That was that was something I'd never heard from anyone. But yeah, I have. I wasn't able to make. I've read most of it. I just wasn't able to do it from start to finish because it's. God, it took forever. Well, it's eighteen thousand words. Yeah. And he'd been he's been working on it for almost a half a year. Uh-huh. But no, he's a brilliant writer, and um, it was well it was well done, of course. But not, like I said, there was just a lot of stuff in there that wasn't new. Because Little for us, for right. us, but for most other people, yeah, I'm sure it was fascinating. Channel mm-hmm. Nine did a, the uh, Clark Factor, uh, the Clark minute, Effect, uh, yeah, thirty minute. I saw him promoting it. Is it any good? Yeah, it, it was. I mean, it's superficial. I mean, yeah. there's nothing new. And they, they but really, what but new? But they interviewed fans. You know, oh, we love her. I mean, kids yeah. came from Montana. And, and in everything. fairness to them, though, what yeah. new can you do right now at yeah, this stage really for can. us? Yeah, and in 30 minutes with three commercial breaks. Oh, so yeah. 22 minutes, you really <laughs> And I thought the way Wright Thompson played, you know, the scene lead being at the restaurant. What restaurant do you think it was? Uh, don't know. Said a, a dimly lit restaurant on a snowy December day in Iowa City. In the ghetto. Um, I, I don't know about that. What restaurant would that be? Um, but they also, I know that after they, um, after their last game of the season against Ohio State, I know the family had reserved a re- I wonder if it's the same restaurant. I wonder if they have a connection. I wonder. I wonder if they have a connection with a certain restaurant. They, just, they probably do. Yeah. and um, But I thought that was neat how he kind of had the scene lead with the three of them. They talked about the, the, the trip, what they, the Croatian yacht cruise, booze no. fest or whatever. No, I had not heard of that either. I hadn't heard of that. No, I had not heard of that. I had not heard about the Ava Jones fender bender, right? Yeah. And how the team rallied around her and what have you. Those were the two. I'm like, that was that stuff was interesting. I had not heard of it. But then the long stuff about her attitude when she first got here. and um, I thought that was real interesting. But it was too. not new, though. We no. all, we've all written no. about that, about how when she got here, they had to work on her body language and her willingness to accept the mistakes of her teammates and what have you. And the one interesting part that I had was that go between between her and Jan in practice when Jan would not budge, throw it in there when she didn't want to throw it in. That was interesting because we hadn't seen that. that I mean, he got more access than any local Iowa media members had ever. But that's what when you're right, Thompson, and you're working for ESPN. I I understand that. But yeah, it's some. It well, was, it's well worth the read. It's well, yeah, it's well, it's well written, and um, but it's just long. It is. I kept, when I kept scroll when I, as I started reading it on my cell phone, I kept I'm, I kept scrolling. I'm, oh, I just want to see where how, and I it never ended. I quit scrolling before I could see where it just kept going and going and going. Well, I got to the end of part one, and then it said what's well, four chapters, yes. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, part two. Well, yeah. Then when you get down there, you part three. By the time you get to part four, it's like climbing Everest. But no, it was it, 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 it wasn't so well written. It would be tedious. But yeah, it was, uh, well, I wouldn't have he made such, it through. He's such a good writer, though, that he can take you along. I mean, he's just got an easy a gift for words, right, Thompson? He's got that really neat thing on ESPN two, the thirty thirty on the Mississippi football team. Yeah, that was undefeated, was a great team, but they were off the field. They were dealing with the the integration of the campus and it, it was a, that actually i saw that. it was good his family was you know involved embedded in all that stuff and no it was really good it i was, couldn't sleep one night um and it's like 1 30 in the morning and i you stumbled upon that i yeah. stumbled on no, that it's, good. it's really good it's really it's good. very interesting and what's interesting and, and this wasn't you know he was narrating it and whatever, but this was more interesting because it involved. He was so involved with it yeah. personally. His family. He had a firsthand account of it. But no, that was interesting. But, but yeah, um, they the women. They have they're meeting with the press in an hour, ten thirty. They play Holy Cross. They play Holy Cross. Who just Tomorrow. who who beat Tennessee Martin seventy two to forty five. So mm-hmm. we'll see. Holy Cross has won over twenty games. I mean, they've really got nothing to lose. I mean, no. It'll be interesting to see if the game is competitive. I'm not convinced it's going to be competitive, but who am I? Uh, my my guess is it'll be com- reasonably competitive for the first quarter. But I do think the second game could be a, a handful. 
between Princeton and West Virginia? Yeah, it could be. I mean, West Virginia, I've looked at them. They're very athletic. They're very aggressive. They're really good on defense. Princeton's got a very good point, point guard. guard. I, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I, I think from looking at their personnel, West Virginia might lose to Princeton, but I think West Virginia would give Iowa a harder time. Well, and their coach, Mr. Motivation, going to win one, and then we're going to send Caitlin Clark packing. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I, I find it, <laughs> hey, you got to think that way. I know. Hey, it's but athletics. Sure. But it's Whatever. Kinda, you got to think that way. kind of goofy. I thought it was kind of funny. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, what's he going to say? You know, we're going to take that first one, then we're going to get our asses handed to us <laughs> by Caitlin Clark. I mean, what do you want him to say? <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my sister was at uh, Liberty last night for Unrelated, but she said that uh, – Princeton was there practicing, running their practice. And she found it interesting that she actually could have sat in the bleacher and and watched. So it's almost like you could have scouted the team before. Uh-huh. Yeah. But yeah, I think? didn't realize. No, well, she said she better not. Well, I don't know what that meant. Probably they would ask her to leave. I don't know. <laughs> but that's all. I didn't realize they found local high schools and stuff like that. So she didn't come in on their sets or anything or their defensive strategy against West Virginia, nothing? She probably would have yelled touchdown when they made a basket. Gotcha. <laughs> so, but Got, that's it. Gotcha. That is interesting, <laughs> though. Yeah. Looks like it's actually let up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. That was a close one. <laughs> What's that? That was a close one. What do you mean? With, uh, with letting up now. Yeah, no, it's not. It's now. It's more uh, rain. Now the round of thirty-two for the women last year was tough. Georgia was a, a very tough team. They weren't, and see, West Virginia kind of reminds me of Georgia. Just, just the way they play, just the athleticism and what have you. So, I'm not sure what. Do we know what West Virginia's record is? Have you seen it anywhere? Uh, I don't. Have I know I could look. Either. Susan Harmon did capsules on all of them. I could probably, I could, I could call that up. Let's see if I have them on this sheet. I don't know. But Susan actually did capsules on all the teams that are here, and I put that up on Hawk Fanatic. I'll find that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be an interesting because this Iowa team is in a position like no other Iowa team has ever been in before, in that they're trying to one up the previous team that made it to the NCAA championship game, which means there's only one thing they can do is win it all. No other Iowa team's ever been in this position. No. So this is really unique. But this is what Caitlin thrives on, and and we'll see. I mean, I wouldn't I, – I, would I be surprised if they won it all? Yes. I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, they're one of the better teams. Some team's going to win it. Yes, for sure. Some team's going to win it. It may not be I'm, – I'm not convinced South Carolina is just going to race through this thing. Well, I mean, they almost lost to uh, Tennessee. Yeah, I'm just not convinced that they're, that's going to happen. So – We'll see. What do you got, Captain? No, I mean, it's going to take. I mean, it's going to take South Carolina maybe being a little bit off and somebody having a great game plan against them like we did last year. Yeah, I yeah. mean, there, there's just. I mean, who would have thought Oakland was going to beat Kentucky? Nobody, except maybe the Oakland. Maybe the Oakland people. Okay. I mean, it, it's that same head coach who back when Lick was here said that Iowa, boy, you got a great one in Lick later, but you better help him by get some better facilities. Remember that? Yes. And I'm sitting there thinking. Yeah, what? kill dude. me, kill me. Yeah, I mean, come on, dude. You really, he's not a great one. Facilities would have helped, but I don't think having that practice well, squad practice it's... thing earlier would have changed anything with Lick. No. The offense still would have been the same. The buried head, John playing more minutes than he should have in those little baby little, shorts. Little Remember the shorts he wore? Yep. My mom always said it looked like he was playing with loaded diapers. <laughs> she said he looked like a little baby with loaded diapers. Well, it, that's kind of ridiculous. It was silly. <laughs> It was actually beyond silly. At times it was maddening. And then that press conference where he said, because we're basically saying, why are you playing your five foot eight kid? And he had the nerve to look at us and say, well, he brings some things to the point guard position that Cully doesn't. Cully Payne, you remember that. Well, well, what would that have been? Shortness, lack of speed. <laughs> well, I mean, just, uh, yeah, I, that's when I knew it was over. Uh, and he wouldn't play uh, David uh, Palmer. Palmer. That's when I knew, though, when he said that remark about John, I, I remember saying to myself in that prayer, I'm like, he's done. There's no way he's going to be able to dig himself out of this because that's when everything was just starting to spiral. But, yeah, the David Palmer thing is still uh, ranks inex- maybe inexplicable. the strangest thing that I've ever dealt with. As inexplicable. An it made no sense. I mean, two great double-doubles back-to-back against Purdue and Wisconsin. It still makes no sense to me. And then he me. barely ever played again. It, it, no, it'll never make sense. And... The, I don't. I remember talking to his 
family didn't understand it. They and then David left. I mean, David was pretty good. Yes, he was. I mean that that game at Purdue. I think he had 19 points and 11 rebounds. I mean, we needed pretty good, and well, all the good players ultimately ended up leaving. I mean, well, they lost the leading scorer on the team three years in a yeah. row. Jake Kelly, to, um, what was it? Tony Freeman. Tony Freeman. And then who was the other one? Um, maybe it was just two years in a row. I thought it was three though. But I mean, remember Aaron Fuller transferred, David Palmer transferred, it and was Cully transferred, Cully Payne transferred. It was just and, so, and it was Exodus, and it was who else had planned to transfer that led to the uh-huh. the dam finally breaking. And they're like, we got to do something, and you know, Barta did. Okay, here we go. I'm, I, let me look and see. I want to see what we got with with um, these teams because these capsules are very convenient. If I could just get this, here we go. Um, let's see, Holy Cross. Location, Worcester, Mass. Enrollment, 3197. That ain't very big. No. Patriot League, uh, they're the Crusaders. Uh huh. Um, let's see. Tennessee Martin. Gee, guess where, they, guess where they're from? They're from Martin, Tennessee. <laughs> uh, well, they're done, so we don't care about them anymore, right? Right. Okay, Princeton is 25 and 4. Enrollment. All right, guess the enrollment of Princeton. Um, boy, I wouldn't have any, uh, t- 10,100, uh, 8,000, uh, 8,900, 8,973. So you were both pretty close. Okay. Um, hello. Yeah. Hey, um, I'm up here in the North end. I was sitting, it's really snowing pretty heavy. Um, but I just also want to talk. I just watched the, uh, Drake men highlight. Yeah. And, uh, Unfortunately, they didn't make it. But uh, boy, that center for Drake—he's a beast. Darnell Brody. Yes, sir. Yeah, he's been around. He played at Seton Hall for two years, and he's been at Drake for three. Yeah, he's been a oh, really, he's a, be- he is he's a beast. He's been a great player for Drake. And I was just talking with my brother the other day about the Hawks. Man, that is the type of guy the Hawks need to get to. Um, Round out thing. Oh, he would definitely help. Yeah, he sure a guy would. like that would definitely help. To me, he looks like an NFL left tackle. He does. Well, that um, boy, help me out with the team they played that uh, Washington State. Washington State. Yeah. They're pretty okay, good. That 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 uh, center they had um, looked like he was a lot bigger, but that Brody kid was. One move he put. I mean, he put some moves on that guy. Yeah, no, he's a good player. I mean, Washington State. I could not believe. Washington State's twenty-five and nine. They're a pretty good team. It's going to be interesting to see what they can do against Iowa State. Um, that Fran needs to look for a guy like that. Well, I think he does. Team. I mean, he does. I mean, Fran offers so many scholarships. Sure. But it's just it's just hard to get you know to close on a lot of guys. But no, hey, darn. Um, I one other thing that's what kind of puzzled me with those bracket selections. They put Iowa State. Right in there with Drake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it they, was on purpose. They do stuff like that. Yeah. Just so they can knock to, out. No, to create storylines. Yeah. They do that to create storylines. Okay. Hey, thanks, guys. Hey, mm-hmm. thanks a lot. So he's now it is starting to snow hard. I mean, it was nothing a minute. Yeah. I mean, uh, when do you get under the desk? <laughs> when do Molly and Tommy come in here just bawling? <laughs> yes. Yeah, just just in fear. <laughs> I've never seen Molly in fear. No, Molly's pretty well grounded. So she's not intimidated by Mother Nature? Well, I mean, nobody likes driving on Sand Road when it's icy. No. I do. I get a kick. Man, whenever there's an ice storm, you I get out to Sand Road and go just gun it drunk. <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding. I've not driven drunk since 1987, and that's the God's truth. Yeah. Oh, Can you man. say the same thing? Yeah. I've never You've never driven, driven drunk. I, I, but no, I really have not driven drunk since. What do you think of that? Thing. That's how many. That's thirty-seven years without. How many beers do you think I've had in my lifetime? I'm going to say maybe that, three. I'd say you have finished none of them. <laughs> well, no. You've had fewer beers in your lifetime than I had last night. <laughs> oh yeah. I had like four. I might have had. I might have had five in my lifetime. Did you finish any of them? And the legit question, because I've never seen you finish one. I don't believe. I that. I can believe that. Plus, I'm one somebody who has a bad habit of not finishing beers. I mean, like this morning when I went, you know, because I, I I hate the thought of having nasty beer bottles with beer in them, so I dump them out. This morning, 
I dumped out like half of two of them. I just, I don't know why. I, I just never remember. I don't them. ever finish these Diet Cokes either. No, I'm kind of like that. Okay, Tom, that point guard you're talking about, her yeah. first name's Caitlin. Yes, spelled, spelled differently. Spelled differently. It's spelled with a K, but it's Caitlin Chen. She's 5'9", point guard, 15.8 points, 3.5 rebounds, Ivy League player of the year. And she's, uh, and she's in I mean, the she, portal. She has to be because they don't yeah, have. That's right. Yeah, and then they, let's see. Here's a cool name. Madison St. Rose. Fat averaging 14.5, 3, 346.3. Ellie Mitchell, 6'1". They're not real, they're not real tall. Um, you want to know some notable alumni from Princeton? Hunter Rawlings. Taylor Branch. Who the hell's Taylor Branch, Susan? Susan Harmon did these. Uh, do you guys know who Taylor Branch I is? Don't, I don't. I don't. I think, I'll look. Yeah, I think Susan's making this sound stupid. Um, George Will. Thornton Wilder. Okay. Alan Dulles, Anthony Lake, Robert Taft, Alan Turing. I haven't heard Robert of Robert Taft. I, have you heard of Alan Turing? I haven't heard no. of half these people. He's no. an American author, Taylor uh, Branch, American author and historian who won a Pulitzer Prize winning trilogy chronicling. 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 <laughs> chronicling. And I feel much. The, the life of Martin Luther King Jr. And much of the history of the American Civil Rights Movement. Uh, the final volume of the 2,912-page trilogy. It's like that Wright Thompson story. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, almighty. was released in 2006. Huh, okay. Um, let's see, West Virginia. I guess the enrollment of West Virginia. 28,500. Twenty-one thousand. Twenty-four. So you're almost. You both were yeah. close. Just one was high, one was low. Yeah. Yeah. So if it was the Price is Right, you would win, right? I would win because you went over. He went over the. Club. Yeah, yeah. Um, 24, 24,200. They're twenty-four and seven. No, they're, they're, they're yeah. See, they're the team. The deal. Uh, um, Hello. Go ahead. Yeah, you guys talking about <laughs> Purdue and little? Well, I guess little Lick. And do you remember Pat Hardy? When Little Lick had that layup over Kramer when Purdue was, like, ranked number one. I do remember that. photos out there everywhere. I do remember that. They're still out there. To me, that was such a sad sight. (laughs) He laid that in. I mean, that, to me, when you're talking about everything that was, like, the Licklider era, that that ranks right up there that somehow he got that shot off and in. And I remember their look on the Purdue guys like, good God. Do you think think Kelly would have made that shot? uh, Maybe not. I mean, Kramer was literally like six feet in the air above him and still missed the ball and went in. And it went in. I do remember that. And everyone laughed. Yeah, yeah, it was. When you guys were talking about that a minute ago, I just started laughing. (laughs) That just, that was the whole Licklider era right there. It was. Sure was. It really was. Thank you for reminding yeah. us of that. Yeah, thanks, that, guys. That is the play I was ref- thinking of, though. Yes. Remember, uh, we went together uh, to a couple games. Oh, and, yeah. And I, you know, this game, I mean, they just kept passing and passing. I said, oh, I'm, I'm going to go up and get a sandwich or something. I went up. I, uh, you know, hit some uh, people that listened. They were talking to me. Finally got my sandwich, came down. It, nothing changed. Still the same score? Uh, yeah, yeah, still the same score, and they were still passing. Let's see, Jesus. West Virginia, well, they had to have had a possession change because there, there's a shot well, Yeah, but, I mean, I, I, Nobody didn't, had scored. I didn't miss anything. West Virginia yeah. is 21 in the net ranking. That's pretty impressive. Players to watch, J.J. Quinterly, 5'8", junior guard, 19.6. Jordan Harrison, 5'6", guard, 13.8, 161 assists. This team runs on guards and defense. Notable alumni. Don Knotts, right scientist Catherine Nip Johnson, it. Jerry West, Hot Rod Hunley, pitchman Billy Mays, who's dead, isn't he? I think Billy Mays is dead, isn't he? he was at, yeah. yeah, he died, I think. And then yeah, singer, he, no, he died. He died at fifty from cocaine. Yeah, it was in his system. Yeah, yeah. And singer Kathy Mattia. Yeah, I've never heard of her. What? She's a uh, country. Country. Okay. Okay. The team started thirteen and zero, but has lost four of its last six. That's interesting. Led Big 12 in steals and second in scoring defense, 57.8. Kellogg, blah, blah, blah. So something's got to give. Well, yeah, that's who I think. I think they'll beat Princeton, but maybe I'm just being stereotyping. Oh, an Ivy League team, they're not going to be as good as a really athletic. So we'll see. 
But I do think West Virginia is built more to cause problems for Iowa because their guard, their strength is the quickness in their guards. But 5'9 and 5'6, Caitlin will just shoot over that. Yep. Yep. I mean, that, that's the thing. That will go back to what I think is one of Caitlin's greatest attributes is her length and her size. She's a legitimate six feet tall. She's slightly taller than I am. She might even be a little taller than six feet, and that is huge in these games. You know, I'm guessing maybe one of the two of those guards for West Virginia might be quicker than Caitlin. But Probably. she's bound up against guards that are quicker than her, but she's so crafty with and skilled with the ball that she can still prevent the ball from being stolen. So we'll see. But they're going to try to pressure. You know they're going to try to get under her skin if they win. It's, it'll be different. I mean, it's going to be – it'll be such an extreme for Iowa going from either Princeton or West Virginia. So it sounds like Princeton-West Virginia could be a 51-50 to could, 50 yeah. type game. It sounds, like it, could be a, it sounds like it could be a competitive game. Yeah. So should we take a break and then we're going to – I mean, I've um, I've had this Rivaldo Marshall interview scheduled now for a week, but I touched base with Sports Information. They said he was good to go. So, like I said, he was kind of a little nervous. So we'll be we'll be nice and gentle with him. We will. You know, like – all right, we'll be right What's back. What's your problem? <laughs> he won an NCAA title. He has no problem. Yeah, there you go. We'll be back. 1-800-800-ROSE. 1-800-800-ROSE. Your FTD florist is the only number you need to know to send flowers anywhere in the country or Canada from anywhere in the country. 1-800-800-ROSE. It's so easy. Just remember one number. 1-800-800-ROSE. Your FTD florist. 1-800-800-ROSE. Remember... For a gift that your loved one will treasure for a lifetime, find it at our family-owned jewelry store in Iowa City, Pertine and Stocker Jewelers. We can show you diamond engagement rings, colored stones, fashion jewelry, and watches. Our jewelers are on site, so we can design jewelry for that special person in your life. We are Hertine and Stocker, serving Iowa City and the surrounding area for three generations. Hertine and Stocker Jewelers, downtown Iowa City, and HertineandStockerJewelers.com. Ask for Willa, Terry, Tim, or Kate. One of us is always there. Don't wait for an emergency to get a backup for your car keys. Unlike the olden days, car keys have gotten extremely complex. Mike's E-Keys for Cars can generate the most technically advanced automotive keys that are on the market today. For spares and lost keys, Mike's E-Keys for Cars can produce most conventional transponder, high security, and remote head keys. Mike's E-Keys for Cars will keep you on the road. Call 319-330-9185 and schedule an appointment today. Don't wait until it's too late. Call 319-330-9185. 319-330-9185 today. GT Car, owner of Supel's Building and Remodeling, has been offering unmatched service and quality for over 25 years. The trained professionals at Supel's Building and Remodeling will install and guarantee the products used in any job, no matter how big or small. They also stand behind their work and offer no-nonsense, exceptional customer service, from design to completion and beyond. Whether it's a simple window replacement or a major house addition, you'll have the confidence that Supel's Building and Remodeling is committed Committed to quality. Visit Suples.net or call them today at 319-337-2246. Truck Mutt and Fury Ford in Iowa City. Bring in your tax refund and save. Buy a new 2022 Ford F-150 with 0% financing and up to $8,000 off. We have over 75 top quality used vehicles. Trucks starting at $59.90 and cars from $49.90. Payments from $199 a month with zero down. Truck Mutt and Fury Ford in Iowa City. Hurry in or shop online at dairyford.com. When you go to a family restaurant, you want three things. One, a wide selection of breakfast, lunch, and dinner items. Two, you want those selections to be affordable and delicious. And three, you want to be treated like family. You get all three at the Midtown Family Restaurant. Breakfast items available anytime the doors are open. Legendary tenderloins, onion rings, and hot roast beef sandwiches. And special ribeye and shrimp nights. Daily specials at each location. And no matter if you're coming in solo or with a group of 20, you get the same special family treatment. The Midtown Family Restaurants at Court and Scott's streets and at the walmart plaza on highway one west follow them on facebook or at midtownfamily.com the family's waiting for you car won't steer call premier premier automotive in north liberty offers full service mechanical auto repair work in addition to being eastern iowa's most trusted name in auto body repair use premier for all your auto repair needs brakes oil changes air conditioning diagnostics transmissions or preventive maintenance whether you hit a deer or your car won't steer. See Premier Automotive in North Liberty. 
Don't let just anyone take care of your smile. At Diamond Dental, you can expect compassion, expertise, and a personalized care plan to protect your teeth for life. With more than 30 years of combined experience, Dr. Forbes and his staff are prepared to tackle even your toughest dental problems, leaving your smile healthy and sparkling. Diamond Dental offers a full range of general and cosmetic dentistry, as well as dental treatment options for snoring and sleep apnea. It's never too early to start thinking about what's best for your smile. Schedule an appointment today by calling 319-390-3703 or visiting the office at 5815 Consul Street Northeast, Suite D1 in Cedar Rapids. You can also visit DiamondDentalPC.com for more information. Dr. Forbes is a proud sponsor of the Hawkeye Wrestling Club and the Inner Circle. Let the Diamond Dental team provide superior care for your entire family. Once upon a time in the land of the Hawkeyes, a business grew. A business that would become synonymous with real estate. Hi, I'm Steve Anderson of Hawkeye Title and Settlement. When you're buying or selling your home, you'll need title and settlement services. Consider the Hawkeye Title and Settlement team. Give us a call at 351-8600. Hawkeye Title and Settlement, the team you love, the people you trust. Are you tired of living in a home that doesn't quite meet your needs? Then it's time to call the experts at Streets Maintenance. Their team of skilled professionals specializes in renovations and remodeling, transforming your home into the space you've always dreamed of. From kitchen bath remodels to complete home renovations, no job is too big or too small. Streets Maintenance will work with you every step of the way to ensure your vision becomes a reality. So don't wait any longer. Call Streets Maintenance to schedule your consultation at 400-4483. Let's start building your dream home today. 84 years of preparation, the wait is over. The Oxyokin's brand new book, Our Recipes, Our Story, is on sale now. 90 pages in full color, 67 recipes, and our unique history for only $24.99. Get yours while they last at the Oxyokin. Available soon by mail order along with our current serving hours at oxyokin.com. The Oxyokin. Oxyokin, in the heart of a man. From the Hurting and Stalker Studios, in the heart of the Hawkeye Nation, this is the mighty 1630 KCJJ Iowa City. Hurting and Stalker Jewelers, making memories, making moments. Rain with a little snow mixed in at times will gradually end here by early afternoon today. Then it's just going to be cloudy with a high of 43. The wind out of the north at 5 to 15. Tonight, clear 24. Tomorrow, sunshine 41. More snow is possible from uh, tomorrow night into Sunday. Some rain mixed with snow likely Sunday. More rain, snow, and wind possible by Monday into Tuesday of next week. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable on the mighty 1630 KCJJ. Temperature now 30. KCJJ Weather, brought to you by Plum Supply. Plum Supply, kitchens and baths, your home never looks so beautiful. Hey, the roads are getting slick now in Johnson County. It's dropped three degrees since they, I got here. Yeah, they have been uh, slick uh, in uh, Cedar Rapids, and now uh, uh, it is snowing heavy in Johnson County, uh, and this thing has moved uh, southward, so. Those are some big flakes right now. Yeah. Uh, but hey, we're back. We what, are. Wonder what it's going to be like at ten thirty. Uh, all hell is going to break loose. And all we have is two donuts and finger riddled pretzels out here. <laughs> what the heck? That's it. Hunter said that's all we have. Well, well according we to Weatherbug, <laughs> it was supposed to be thirty six degrees yeah. now, well, and it isn't. Well, no, it's thirty. It isn't. Let me check mine. His will say 25. <laughs> oh, minus snow and 32. It was 32 like an hour ago when you read the yeah. temperature, it, but it's dropped to. But no, it's. Okay, I'm, I just refreshed it. It's 30. <laughs> I mean, the parking lot's all snow covered right now. I mean, yeah. it's coming down pretty hard. It yeah. looks like we're going to get at least an inch, I bet. Hello. Hey, do you guys know what the attendance was for the playing game at Carver last night? Good question. I, I didn't look. I did not look. I, I did turn the – it was on ESPN, too, and it looked like maybe a few hundred. Yeah. 
You know, as much as Iowa, their NIT game didn't draw much, when you look at other NIT attendance, we were top four, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they were roughly just under 5,000. And if we happened to beat uh, Utah, you know, I think that we'd have a decent crowd for the next round if they – Yeah, I'm I think curious the- how close – how close the attendance was for people interested to see who the Iowa ladies would play next versus the NIT game, you know? Mm-hmm. But, yeah, they will not – I was told that they will not this year play an NIT game at um, Extreme or somewhere else, not this year. Maybe that's something they'll think about down the road if they're in the NIT game again. But that's what I was told yesterday, that whatever Iowa – if they do host a third-round game, it will be at Carver is what I was told. So. They'll be able to there was a play-in game for the for the women yesterday that I think the attendance said it was 155 or something like that. So. No, that's yeah. yeah. But, uh, Sounds I'm about right. A lot more than that, but Carver. But anyway, go Hawks. Go yeah, on. it did not look like there was a lot of people there, but I didn't expect there to be a lot of no. people there. I mean, I just nope. I just didn't. Plus, it was on ESPN too, so that probably made it even easier to stay home. Oh yeah. So. And we have had company, so we weren't. Watching anything last night. But that was a, it was a good, the NIT crowd for the game the other night was good. And NIT crowds are always good. They've always, it's because sometimes it's different people that aren't there at a lot of the games. And it, no, it's just, it's just a different crowd. But I thought they brought it the other night. And Peyton Sanford even made a point of saying that the crowd made a difference because they were loud. They were. And it, I mean, no, it, it was not a big crowd, but the people that were there wanted to be there. And it was a fun game to watch. It sure was. I know it was a fun game to watch against two pretty good teams. And two different kinds of teams, and it was it was. And hey, look at the Big Ten. Game. Michigan State won yesterday. Illinois won, as I expected. Michigan State, though, that, I did not expect them to win as easily as they Big did. Big Ten is five and zero in yeah. postseason play right now. Right now it is, and Michigan State looked good. They looked the way I thought they would be this year. Uh, guard heavy, very connected, strong defensive team. They just, I mean. That was a pretty decent Mississippi State team they were playing, too. I mean, I believe it was Mississippi State, wasn't it? I think so. But no, but they just seemed to be in control of that game most of the way. It was impressive. Watch him. Watch Izzo get this team to, like, the Elite Eight or something. It would not surprise me. Well, they got to beat North Carolina, who is... Uh, they're good, but they're, they're beatable. But they're not... They're not invincible. Monsters. They're good, but they're not invincible. No. Nope. I do think North Carolina will probably win the game, but I wouldn't be stunned if a veteran Michigan State team found a way to w- beat them one time. No. Nope. All it takes is once. It's not a series. That's exactly right. Thank you. Looks like Jay is bringing in some goodies. Yeah. Yeah. Diet Coke. Oh, the Diet Coke for you to leave on the counter <laughs> unfinished? Is that one over there finished? Uh, not the one yet. to your right? Uh, no. But well, you're this will be a Diet Coke. Yeah. I'd, I'd, you're going to move on to the next one, though, I'll aren't you? I'll have to move on to That's the like next. me and my beer. Yeah. But I don't have someone going and giving me beer when yeah. I'm drinking it by myself. Sounds like a country style. I would love one, Jay. Thank me you. And my beer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Nice and cold. Yeah. I'm going to uh, phone this person. Well, what time is it? It's uh, four to ten. Okay, yeah, this, this Rivaldo. Is yeah, like I said, I don't know. He's not. He's never done a radio interview before, but you know, we're pretty easy we'll to do talk to. We'll do the best to. we can. We'll have fun with it. And I, I am going to ask him the Kinnick well, question. Well, and at he's. The end. I think I told the SID contact to give him a heads up that we will ask him that. And I hope he says Bob Marley since he's from Kingston, Jamaica, and the movie's out. You have not seen the movie, have you? I have not. Oh, you wouldn't because you're not into that. I, Probably not. I, I want to see the movie. Hunter wants to see it. I want to see the movie. I, I love his music, but I just want to, I mean, I've always been fascinated by his story. Um, so we'll see how this goes. But like I said, he's the 800-meter indoor NCAA champion. And when I saw that, I'm like, you know, that merits an interview. I mean, that's pretty impressive because that just doesn't impressive. happen very often. I just hope he answers his phone. And like Captain, he can leave him a message, and if he calls back. Did he answer? No. Okay. Did you okay. Left? Mail, okay. So. All right. I'll keep, if, I'll keep if, trying. Yeah. Well, if you yeah. did, you leave him a message. Yes. Okay. Let me see which one. There you go. That's all we can do. And yep. um, yeah. If we talk to him, great. And if not, no, um, call him. Again. We'll always have Paris. Yeah. As Humphrey Bogart famously said. Yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, my neighbor just texted me the matchups today. Today's games: Northwestern versus Florida Atlantic, eleven fifteen. Northwestern's in trouble. They're going to lose that game. Do they? I think they are, yes. Well, Florida Atlantic. Are they getting it, anybody back, Northwestern? Uh, well, they're not getting – I'm not sure if Nicholson's back. But Langbor, they're not getting Ty 
Very, he's back. Right. He's out for the year. I was um, Florida Nichols Atlantic said. made it to they made it to the Final Four last year. Some people were saying they probably didn't deserve to be in it this year. I think I saw the records like twenty five and nine, but they think that they're kind of riding on the success they had last year. But they're still that's a lot of the same players. I I would be very surprised if Northwestern won that game. I hope they do. I hope they do. But let's see. We got um, UAB, San Diego State, Western Kentucky, Marquette. Stetson, Connecticut, New Mexico, Clemson, Yale, Auburn, Colorado, Florida, Nebraska, Texas A&M. That's the one I really want to watch. Vermont, Duke, Grambling, Purdue, Charleston versus Alabama, Longwood versus Houston, Wisconsin versus James Madison. That's That's another one I really want to see. Boy, was I wrong about McNeese State, man. I thought McNeese State was going to put up. They got destroyed. I thought they were going to put up a – I've got Rivaldo. Oh, you got him on. All right. Got him on the line. How you doing, Rivaldo? Uh, I'm good. How are you? Good. This is a Pat Hardy. We're doing all right. Tom Suter and Captain Steve with KCJJ Radio here in Iowa City. Appreciate you coming on. And first off, congratulations on becoming an NCAA champion because, man, it doesn't happen very often here. The first one since 1998. Just Just talk about just how proud you are about achieving something that's pretty spectacular. Uh, You're breaking up. Um, I'm not even so clear. You can't hear me? No, no, you you go in and out. Oh. Okay, I can hear you fine. Oh, uh, well, I just um just what 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 was it like the feeling of I was pretty confident like I was telling my coach like, "Hey coach, tomorrow I'm going to win." And stuff like that, you know, like I had a lot of confidence going into the race. And also like with you in the race, like when when there was like the last 400 meters to go and I was there like I was actually at the front. I'm like, "All right, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna make my move soon. And then when I make my move, I'm gonna see who can come with me. So you know. So were you aware how long it had been since Iowa had an NCAA champion? 1998. No, I realized that um, it was it was a minute since Iowa um a national champion and stuff. But you know, like coming here, like I told my coach, I, I want to make history and stuff like that. And you know, <laughs> to see that I'm the first 800 meter champion. Like, yeah, no. So and you've already done it. You've already made history. Yeah, you've already made history, and now the outdoor season. How different is it running the 800 inside as opposed to outdoors? Well, inside it's four laps, so outside it's two laps, and like it's less turns and stuff. So like, it's not um, as difficult inside as it outside. You know, like I think outside you just got to be aggressive, and, and that's about it. Okay. So what was it that led you to Iowa? How did you get here? Well, I was in JUCO at first. Like, you know, I was at Indian Hills at mm-hmm. first. And, mm-hmm. uh, I, I, came, I, came, I came to Iowa for me, and Coach Wake and I thought he saw something in me, you know, and he started talking to my coach and stuff like that. And then from there, you know. And also, like, when Coach Wake and I was, like, recruiting me and stuff, like, he was, like, you know, talking to me about things that I can do here and like I kind of done my own research okay like, see okay you got guys who improved and where they came from and stuff like that so I thought it would be like a good fit for me and I just take a chance well so do you think uh, do you still have a lot of room to improve I do I do have a lot of room to improve I also need to believe in myself a little more and that's a that's another thing like I need to believe in myself a little more, and then I'll for sure go run way faster outside. Yeah, we had Kalen Walker on Wednesday, and he talked about the same thing about just getting better. I mean, just and and it seems like that your stories are similar. You guys have just improved so much. What is that? Just a daily approach? Just I mean, every day you just work to get better each day, and just a kind of a steady increase. Yeah. Um. See. I actually train hard, like, every day. Like, you know, once I got a workout, I'll do my best. Like, once I'm feeling good, I'm trying to crush the workout. And checking with coach, I'm like, coach, is this good? Like, whatever. And, he, and also, like, you know, doing the extra stuff, like doing core on my own, doing the cold top, getting treatment and stuff like that, taking care of your body and stuff like that. So, yeah. Okay. So, R- Rivaldo, how important is diet in, in your day-to-day regimen and uh, – because Kalen said uh, it. Kalen's was weird. He's pizza. And, pizza and sugar. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Well, I'm just curious. <laughs> what's your diet like? See, um, I'm, like, 
I'm a person like I don't go out and eat like I make my own stuff. So like oh, no. you know, I'm from Jamaica, so I've been making my own Jamaican meal like every day and stuff like that. So it's mostly rice, chicken, like steak, salmon, and like potatoes and stuff like that. And I also be eating like a lot of broccoli, avocados, and okay. stuff like that. Okay. Uh huh. So you like so? Can I say you like to cook then? Is that something you enjoy doing? Yeah, that's what I like doing. Because I've had Jamaican food, and I, oh, I, I, I love Jamaican. I love Jamaican jerk I love Jamaican seasoning. jerk seasoning. I assume you use a lot of that on your stuff, on your chicken and stuff? Yeah, I do. Oh, yeah. I can Yummy. Taste, I can t- yeah, you grew up, you're from Kingston, Jamaica, right? No, I, I'm from Portland, Jamaica, but I went to high school in Kingston. Okay, so oh, gotcha. So when did you first start com- coming over to the United States? Was it, Did you go straight to Indian Hills, or have you been over here prior to that? Uh I would say I went straight to Indian Hills, but I, I've went to Penn Relay like two times already. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, I know the weather's not very nice today, but this, I mean, you know what Iowa weather's like. You've been here enough, but this, Kalen was even talking about how it was so warm in February. It made, it's made it easier to train for you guys. I mean, has the weather helped you too? Because you've, you've been able to be outside a lot more than you normally would. Well, um, because I, I, was, like, I was like, Going to the Nationals, I haven't been outside that much. So, like, while everyone was outside, I was still, like, running. Okay, inside, you know? okay, okay. That After makes sense. I was still out there. I had, like, a workout outside on the few run, but I, I got to go back on the treadmill. I wake up and see snowing. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got to ask, going to the outside, are you the guy to beat? I mean, you're the indoor champion. Are, are Do you feel like you're going to have a target on your back? Well, yeah, I do. I will, because everyone want to be the the champion now. So you know, mm-hmm. I gotta I gotta step my game up a bit too, and that's something that kind of motivates me to push even harder in practice, knowing that I'm the champion. Everyone's gonna come. So, yeah. so, like a typical practice for you, outdoor, indoor, like. Uh... Uh, what what do you do? What what how, like how much actual jogging do you do? I mean, and like how many during the course of a typical practice do you run an eight hundred as fast as you can, or how does that work? Uh, it depends. Like some days it's like a long run. You know, I do like six miles or eight miles at like six thirty pace. Like you know, wow. like, okay, that's like a recovery run. And like some days I got uh six hundred repeats. Like not at a fast pace, but. You know, like a tempo stuff. Okay. I don't really like. I don't really run that ultra eight hundred in practice all out. The most I would do all out in practice is like a five hundred or okay. stuff like that, which will get me like race shop for the eight hundred. Okay. Okay. Um, so is that by by your choice, or uh, do, do your coaches help you plan your daily workout? Yeah. Is there a lot of give and take with you and the coaches on how, the best way to approach things? Uh well. The coach was the one who, like, came up with a workout. Okay. And, like, sometimes you got, like, a few options. And it also depends on how I'm feeling. Like, if I'm feeling great, then we can get a lot of work in. And if I'm not feeling so good, then he's like, okay, we will do this and we won't push you too much. You know, because, like, your body needs rest at time. Sure. Like, mm-hmm. When I, I watched your indoor race where you won the NCAA title, so when did you know going down the stretch, I've got this? When, when did you say to yourself, yep, this is mine? What, was it not until you crossed the line, or when did you think? I was looking. I was looking up on the, the TV. Like, yeah, I could see that. With a hundred to go, like on the curb, I looked up to the right, and I saw that I was in front. And I'm like, okay, as soon as I get off the the curb, I'm gonna pump them on, and then look up again and see where I'm at. And then once I did that, I looked on the TV. I was like, damn. I'm, I'm this far. I, I wasn't expecting me to be that far. And then, like, I was thinking of a celebration to do. Like, cause, like yeah, I got this. But I just put my hands up. No, you handled it well. No, and it was a it was a it was a decisive victory. It was an impress it was an impressive race, and we really appreciate you coming on. We know you're you're busy and what have you. And I you know we're a radio station. We like music here. We play, and we're gonna we have one last question. I gotta ask you since you grew up in Jamaica. I'm a huge Bob Marley fan. Are you a Bob Marley fan? Music? Yeah, I do listen. I, I do listen to Bob Marley, but like. Not like that, you know. Okay, well, he's a long time ago. I know I'm showing my age. But we got one last question we want to ask you. We really appreciate you coming on. Congratulations, and we look forward to seeing what you can do this spring. Tom, take it away. Okay. So uh, Beth Getz, the new uh, athletic director at the University of Iowa, picks up the telephone and calls you, Rivaldo Marshall, and says, Rivaldo, I need your help. 
We need to uh, find a band, a singer, or an act to fill up Kinnick Stadium. Who is Rivaldo Marshall going to hire to fill up Kinnick Stadium? Oh. If it's a if it's a if it's a Jamaican artist, it can be. It, it, it's up to you. Whatever you want. Beth says Beth says it's your your deal. Get who, it, but fill up the stadium. Now, of course, it can't be Bob Marley because he's been dead sadly for forty three years. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh no, I would I would go for Burner Boy, although he's not a Jamaican. He's a he's a he's a I think Nigerian. Okay, I've, I'll I've, go for Burner. Okay, I I know who you're talking to. No, that All right. would, that would be a good. That, I, I like the sound of that music too. Fair no, enough. Fair enough. Great answer. And hey, this was fun. I appreciate. it. I know. Have you done many radio interviews before? No, I, this is my first. Thing. Okay, well you handled it well. You were you did you, well. It was fun talking to you. And hey, like I said, congratulations on an amazing achievement, man. NCAA champion. Not many people can say that. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right. And that was fun. All the Marshall, I like yes. I like meeting athletes from different sports, from different walks of life. And um, I was told by Iowa that he was a little nervous. I thought he handled it. I, fine. Did, he didn't I, sound nervous. Didn't sound nervous. I thought he was. I thought he was good. But man, the Bob Marley answer kind of. I'm old, Captain. Yeah, I'm you old. Got to get with. You know, basically, Rivaldo was saying, "Yeah, I've heard of him, but I don't listen to him because he's been dead for forty well, years." Yeah. Is that kind of what he said? See, I loved the the answer about the food. Oh, I, did I too. wasn't expecting that at no, all. No, he cook. He, it sounds like he mostly yeah. cooks his own food because he thinks it's better than. <laughs> well, it, oh, it, 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 and I do love the Jamaican jerk. I, I do too. It's really. Does Ann ever do much with? No, she's that's a little feisty for her. For her, she's not into spice. Not to see. Crazy. I love uh, spice. I, 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 I couldn't eat enough spice. Yeah. But no, that was a fun interview. Yeah. I appreciate. No. And I did watch his race a couple of times. He won it convincingly, and he. I thought he he wasn't. You know, he didn't overreact, but you could see him looking up at the scoreboard, and you could see the smile on his face when he knew he had it. I mean, it's just rare. I mean, no, that's awesome. 1998. Where were we in 1998? You were. Here. You've been here for four years. <laughs> I've I'd been, been here the, for six years. I've been at the Press Citizen for seven. <laughs> I mean, that's a long night. Hayden Fry was still the football coach. I mean, that was a, that's a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, it is. 31 years. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. But, no, that was fun, and I appreciate John Leo from Iowa Sports Information for helping to arrange those. It is weird talking to a guy about track and field right now and looking, it's, and looking uh, outside. And it, yep. I mean, the, it, we're all covered with snow now. This is weird. Boy, of course, the, the weather's been weird this winter. It has been a bizarre yeah, winter. Yeah, when I asked him, I should have thought about that. He was – a lot of those guys that are practicing outside in that nice weather were done with their indoor season. But, of course, he went to the end because he was a champion. So um, well, We're going to get more rain and snow uh, Saturday night and Sunday. And then Monday, low 60s. <laughs> well, And then it goes back into but the – But today – is today supposed to get up to the 40s? 42. Is it going to? I don't know. It's 31. And I mean, if it here. stays like this, I don't think they're going to play softball, do you? Well, you wouldn't think so. It, it, it's not warming up like it was well, supposed to. I can't to quite wait yet. Uh, till we hear the drama queen's forecast. If she's doing the weather today. When will, when will we hear it? Why can't we play it? Let's hear it right now. I don't think she's updated that. Wow. What's she, maybe she's stuck in the snow. Yeah. Well, so we're still 31 degrees. Could this? Be, could she maybe like? Is this snow again or snowzella? Uh, 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 what, what? Snowpocalypse. Rain snowpoc- with a little snow mixed in at times will gradually end here by early afternoon today. Then it's yeah, just going to be cloudy hurt. with a high of 43. The wind out of the north at 5 to 15 tonight. Clear 24. Tomorrow sunshine 41. More snow is possible from uh, tomorrow night into Sunday. Some rain mixed with snow likely Sunday. More rain, snow, and wind possible by Monday into Tuesday of next week. I'm meteorologist wow. Sean Cable on the mighty 1630 KCJJ. Temperature the- now 30. Some of my tree, my trees are budding. It's like they're confused. Yeah. They don't know what to do. Yeah. The buds look different than they've ever looked, like on my ash borer and my other tree in the back. Was it Kim Murdy when she played college basketball and she had her ponytails? Kim who? Next- Mulkey? Kim Mulkey? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Kim Mulkey, yeah. Next to one of the munchkins from the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, my God. It The one thing, lollipop cue. They look. I have never had so many hits on Facebook. It, <laughs> it is when she played. She looked just like a munchkin. Like, she was good though. She. I'll give her credit. Oh, she was a good little yeah. point guard. She was. And 
I'm 65 years old, and driving in this stuff is nothing like I've ever seen. I'm going back home. It like it froze underneath. And then yeah, well, you're in Cedar Rapids. Letter, it's not. Yeah. There's cars all over. Yeah, I bet it's getting a little. Uh, this is me talking. Oh, yeah, I bet yeah. it's getting a little slick outside yeah, now. I mean, I mean, the drive-in was nothing. I'm but, sure it is not. But I'm sure, like, it's going to be. You got to be a little. Yeah. Use a little more caution. But yeah, we're getting hit but, pretty hard here down now. I mean, there could be a big difference between Iowa City and Cedar Rapids. But I mean, it's just all ice underneath up here. Yeah. So. Well, be careful. Yeah, be careful. Day, guys, all right. Thanks for the interview. That was really good. Oh, good. thanks. I hope well, it's not. Who was his artist? Oh, I can't remember the name. But when he said it, I've heard. Uh, Hunter, did you hear him? What the heck? I don't know. I can't remember it. But when he said it, I remember it. Cause, but I may be getting it mixed up with. There's two Ethiopian artists that I've heard on um, the Internet. And it's, I don't know how do you describe the sound. It's not reggae. But it sort of is. Tropical. Yeah, I guess that, that yeah. sort of. And I think that's the one he was referring to. But he, I thought he might go to Bob Marley, but just too old. Yeah. Well, we had this Hispanic guy come in here. He was going to buy the station. And he goes, so what do you, you know, and he plays mariachi music. And he said, what do you, what do you, how do you think that would go? And I said, you'd be broken a month. <laughs> I said, you got 25 to 54 year old. Hispanic people, okay, uh, are not listening to that anymore. They're listening to Bruno Swift. Mars and Taylor Swift. Led Zeppelin. You know, yeah, and uh, yes. Surrealistic pillow. <laughs> Jim, Jim Morrison. Jim Morrison. With a tube. <laughs> he didn't do that. <laughs> Hello. Uh, I got another weather update for you. Yeah. Um, in Tipton, we probably have three inches. And um, I just got on the phone with my daughter in Cedar Rapids, and she tried to make it to work in Iowa City, and she said it was Armageddon up there. And wow. She went back home. Probably wow. a smart thing. I, I wonder if they're going to let school out. All right. Well, thanks for the update. Yeah, everybody up in Cedar Rapids, um, be careful. Yeah, it's, yeah, it ain't good. But I th aren't we getting a little bit more than we thought we were going to get? I mean, just ten an hour ago, we were, oh, look how lucky we are. We don't get anything. And now it's snowing pretty hard. Hello. What are you listening to? I got it on, somehow got onto a Facebook call from Amy and Molly. Oh, and I don't know how to get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just I don't here. know how I got on it. Please. Well, just hit. I don't the, know how to get out. Yeah, hit the three. I think lines. I think somebody's on the phone. On the left. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the auction. Oh. Steve, yes. out here, First Avenue, Corville, at the bridge, going uh, to 80 westbound. They got a five-car pileup, including two semis, a cam bus, and a couple cars, and it's blocking the roadway. Jesus. Wow. You can't, come, you can't come across the bridge over the interstate, and they're routing the southbound back around to 965. Well, thank you for the heads up. Now they have those press conferences over at Carver Hawkeye yeah, Arena. Start. Yeah, I'm. That's well, gonna... I'm, I found out because I ran into it. <laughs> All right. Well, be careful. Yeah, Thanks be for the heads careful. up. Yep. And the roads are. It's about uh, three quarters of an inch of snow out here in Corville to an inch, and maybe about a half mile visitation. Visit are the roads ready. slippery? Yes, they're getting slippery. Great. All right. All right. Thank, well, thank you. you. Thank you. Be careful. Thanks. Yep, bye. I mean, they've got those press conferences at Carver starting at 1030. That's right over by Carver. That's going to be a cluster over there. Yes, it is. Everybody just drive, proceed with caution. Let me see. I just I think I got another text message. Um, that's so some... people have forgotten how to drive in snow and yes. already? Okay, let me run down some of the, in our listening area. Anamosa, uh, uh, no afternoon preschool. Uh, the uh, warning preschool will dismiss at 1. Uh, Benton Community has closed down. Uh, no schools. Uh, let's see. Uh, Central City activities are canceled. The Senior Center is closed. Uh, Union Community schools are closed. Uh, Maquoketa schools 
have closed down. Uh, the Jones County Senior Center uh, is closed down for today. Uh, da, 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 da. Weight Watchers of Cedar Rapids uh, closed. Lynn Area Credit Union closed. So uh, basically, as you go farther north, things are shut down. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So just got to take it. Just got to take it easy. Yeah. And earlier, Hunter was giving me crap about doing the weather and following the weather. Hunter was wrong. Hunter is always wrong. Always? I think what Hunter was saying is a lot of people have common sense and they can look outside and realize, hey, I need to proceed with caution. I don't need the guy on the radio telling me Well, then why is everybody piled up? Well, (laughs) sometimes it happens. And not everybody's piled up. You're exaggerating to push your narrative. Everybody's piled up. You're yeah. exaggerating. You're just like Trump. You're exaggerating to push your narrative. I got five million, five hundred million dollars in the bank. He nice. Says, got cash. That's what he said. We'll get it out. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So there were five upsets out of sixteen games yesterday, or the uh, higher seed beating the lower seed. One eight nine probably is not an upset. That's. Two very similar teams. Hello. Hello. Hey, dog. I got piled up on Saturday. Okay. okay. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I what don't. do you look at me for? No, he's part of your... No, he wants yeah. an explanation. Part of your he's part of your cabal. This is, this is your section. He wants an explanation, and you're not giving it to him. <laughs> no. no, I'm not. Hello. I'm a teacher. What did he well, say? I have no idea. I said, have your teacher? I'm a teacher. I mean, his, he, he's not accomplishing anything I, if we can't uh, even yeah, hear yeah. and understand what he's saying. Well, yeah. I know. He is a drunk. <laughs> I, he, Let's uh, hope he's not out drinking and driving in this stuff. Yeah, or at any. Yeah. But um, he's getting them in, though, Captain. He's hey, starting well. to... He, he, I, I know, which is bringing us down. To the, br- it's bringing us down to his level. <laughs> Before you know it, those are going to start. Next thing you know, he's going to be on for 10 seconds, then 20, then 30. So Michigan State and North Carolina women get underway in eight minutes. That's hard to believe. On ESPN 2. 10.30, huh? Uh-huh. Well, 11.30 Eastern time. Yeah. And then in 38 minutes... The Maine Black Bears and Ohio State women are on ESPN. So that's that's getting out there. And then um, what time is that Northwestern men's game? Do you have that? Well, actually, I have it. Um, I've got it on my – just a second. I am um, Northwestern – let's see, Northwestern versus Florida AM, 11.15 this morning. That's the one I want to watch. The, so – in a little over an hour. Yeah. Or a little less, less than, than an hour. hour. That's the game I want to watch. I just don't think Northwestern can keep up with this team, especially shorthanded. Hello. Hey, uh, change the weather nonsense conversation. On NBC Sports out of Chicago the other night, I watched the British women's all-star basketball game with Megan Gustafson in it. She was also in the three-point shooting contest. Megan? So oh, it was fun to watch that. Oh, okay. How'd she do? How'd she do in the three? Uh, she she got pitted. She's on the London team, and she got pitted against. They did a man against a woman, and so the man player on London uh, outshot her. And then in the second round, it was another man and woman, and I think the guy advanced. So the total points out of the four, she got third. Uh, mm-hmm. But she played really well. It was just cool to see her. And yeah, no, that's uh, you neat. know how you. Yeah, how you go from the WNBA. There are a lot of WNBA players in the game. Okay. Oh, neat. So, and what network yeah. was this on? It was on NBC Sports out of Chicago. I think it was Tuesday night. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for sharing yeah. that. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Well, go Hawks. So did you ever imagine in your wildest no. dreams watching Megan play at the University of Iowa that she would be in a three-point no, shooting that, contest? No, that seems kind of odd. That, and She's had to change her game. That guy had an opinion about the weather. Yeah, basically said to take that weather and nonsense. shove it. What do you have? Nonsense. You have a five he car pile it up nonsense on a busy, on a busy section. Nonsense. Of town. 
with two semis and a cam bus. Hunter's, Hunter has <laughs> created that narrative. <laughs> The, the weather dismissal, although I fed it too, because uh, I, like Hunter was doing this morning, I've teased you about being a, 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 a weather drama queen. A weather right? alarmist? Weather drama queen. Well, you got a five car. <laughs> you know, that, I don't know that that's nonsense. Those people out there are saying captains on our side, that Dick Hardy's mocking us, and we're here in, in trouble. Hopefully, nobody, I, hopefully nobody's hurt. It doesn't sound like there was anybody injured, but it just sounds like a, yeah. a pick. Just what do you got? This just in. All of our cars just ran into each other in the parking lot. Oh, my God. Oh, heck? <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> but it sounds like a, a semi did a, like a. Yeah, it's a mess. That's going to be but a then, mess. Yeah, that will be a mess. And it's a busy section. I don't know that it's nonsense. <laughs> yes. I knew when he said that. I looked up at you. I'm surprised you didn't take over the call right there. You let him go. Hello. <laughs> you were ready to lash. Hey, guys. Yeah. Hey, guys, Joe from L.A. calling. Is it Hi, snowing Joe. out there, Welcome Joe? The <laughs> no, it's not snowing badly. Okay. But this, you're flashing me back to the early 80s when I was an undergrad there. Every The end of every February and March, it'd get beautiful. I'd be wearing shorts and T-shirts. And I would think, ah, finally. And then, bam, just be belted with bad snowstorm by the yep. end of March. Yeah. Oh, I remember. We've had, so we've had some bad ones in April. You got it. Oh yeah. Some yeah. things so never change, Joe. Dream. Yeah. Well, just with that. Some things never change. They, you're living the dream, though. So, what's the temperature oh, yeah. out in LA right now? You don't want to know, Pat. You know, it's Let awful. Me, I'm going to guess it's 76. <laughs> no, no, that's Florida. Here, it's it's about in the um, maybe mid 60s, and oh. it's, we're getting a little marine layer where I am, so Ooh. it's a little. There's some cloud cover, but it'll go away in an hour or two. Okay. Well, enjoy it. I mean, we've been pretty fortunate still for the no, most part. No, this win winter oh, has been nothing. But I did not see this coming. Except for two and a half weeks of hell. Hell. Yeah, which I still feel. I I have family there. They were telling me that it was too cold to even step outside. Today? No. no. no back oh, back then, yeah, it was cold. Hell. No, it was brutal yeah. for about, it was, yeah. well, it, what the cold, the snow was about two and a half weeks. The bitter, bitter cold was like three-fourths of that time. Yeah. Because when it first started snowing, it was in the 20s. Then it just got brutal. But, yeah, this you know, will um, this will subside quickly. You know, it's neat, as, you know, I teach um, undergrads and master's students, and there's more excitement about the women's um, brackets than there are about the men's this year. Uh, yeah, Isn't that's, that interesting? That's yeah, the Caitlin in, Clark. In, and it's in not even Iowa. California. And I just think that's a big yeah, part of that's Caitlin Clark. Los Angeles. That's, yeah. It's it fascinating. It could be also that L.A. has a lot of women's teams in and no men's teams in. Well, and you also got who they, you, you've also got who some people think will be the heir apparent Juju. to Caitlin Clark and yeah. Juju Watkins. And, they're Juju different types of players, hard, but she's going to be the new – she'll be the face of the women's basketball college-wise next year. And you I think, think more than Paige? Yes. I think she's better than Paige. Now it will depend on how good Connecticut is. Paige has just been um, – the injuries – I mean, Caitlin, when they entered high school, college, Paige was ranked ahead of Caitlin. Yeah, she was. But I thought from the very beginning Caitlin was more dynamic. Just a better – they're both great players. I just – I would pick Caitlin in a heartbeat over Paige if I had to pick one to build a team. And no knock on page. I was okay. Caitlin's just so good. So well, always good to hear hey, from you, Joe. Good. Always great to listen to your show, guys. All right, Keep thanks. Keep up the good work. Bye. Yeah. So the yeah UCLA and USC women's teams are both outstanding. Mm -hmm. Lauren Betts for UCLA, which I mean Iowa did try to. They made an effort. To they try did. To, they made an effort, but I mean I don't think they could match. Nil wise and what have you. And I wrote a column, and I, I'm surprised I haven't gotten more. I, I, I'm I'm impressed with Iowa fans. There's been a few, oh, he's a traitor, lose. I mean, you can – Caden Proctor, obviously, this is not a good look what he's done. It doesn't look good for him. It isn't. But, but instead of just ripping him, rip the system. The system is so flawed that he's allowed to do this. That He's a, he's basically doing what he's allowed to do because sure. the system's no because structure, no rules, no vision, no accountability. And it's just – there's no structure to anything, and he's just doing what he can – they, I blame the system. I blame the NCAA for washing their hands of this. I mean, it's and it's a mess. Hello. Good morning, Pat. Hey, uh, can you give us an update on the woodpeckers? Um, well, we put another one up, and they didn't charge me. I'll tell you what, this company, I, I, I didn't bring the business card with me to say their name, but I will again because I know they don't advertise, but they deserve – they've been great, man. They've been um, – 
sending the same kid out. He put up another one, and it, it worked all day yesterday. I've got two of them hanging, and yesterday it was great. They, they didn't touch the house. But the battle wages on. I mean, it's not over yet. These things are determined, and they're annoying. And I think they – I mean, now they're basically waiting in the trees for me to leave, and then when I leave, they start pecking. But the second one has made a difference. I think they make something you can put in your paint and repaint your. It is, but it's, it, it costs over a hundred dollars a gallon. I've already looked into it. Wow. Okay. Well, yeah. and you know what? If you want to stop putting uh, bad money after good, or however that thing goes, probably the ultimate would just be to put vinyl siding on. Yeah, I know, I know but I, I don't want to. I mean, I just repainted the house two years ago. And spent. Oh, I know. I don't really want to. I don't really want vinyl siding. I like wood right. better. But no, you, that I understand what you're saying. But and my I neighbor. Yeah. Well, my neighbor said she did the same thing, but she said the birds still peck on the vinyl siding. They just don't damage it. But she says the, the noise. Is, uh, uh, if you're going to live there very long, every time you repaint your house, you're going to have to every, I don't know, 10 years or so. I've already painted it's it twice. Expensive. It's so expensive for labor and paint to have your house repainted. Nine grand. So after you repaint two or three times, you probably will have paid for the vinyl siding. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you sell vinyl siding? <laughs> No, no, no. I mean, okay. with steel, steel siding, anything, you know, that's resistant to woodpeckers. I just yeah, it. I've already painted the house twice. And, I mean, that's something I may address down the road, but I want to give this a chance. Because, like I said, I like wood better than I like vinyl siding. That's just me. Yeah. And But, no, I, I – my, uh, my house had that T-111 stuff on it, they call it. And it's like sheet wood siding. It's kind of like plywood, but – Boy, there are some, like you said, there must be little bugs in it or something. Well, that's what it is. And they're going for the soft part of the plywood that's in between the yeah. the the wood on the side of my house. It's the same thing they're going after. I've This company, they've patched up all the holes. And like I said, the second one that's hanging, it, it, it was working yesterday. It worked all day yesterday. They, I never had any trouble with them yesterday. So we'll see. But the company has not been very change, understanding. Not to change the subject, but to change the subject. Did you guys see, uh, I was watching, I think it was the, must have been the Iowa State men, or maybe somebody else last night, but I think it was on that true network, and they superimposed the shot clock once it gets down to 15 seconds on the free throw line. And I think only the viewers can see it on TV, but boy, that's a neat option. Um, and, uh, yeah, it is cool. That looks like it looks like a billiard ball or a cue ball sitting on the free throw line and starts counting down like 15, 14, 13. Yeah, they're making but it I more and more. CBS. CBS wasn't doing it for the Kentucky game. They're making it more and more easy to stay at home to watch games. They are. They they? really are. Yeah. Hey, go Hawks. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. But, yeah, Susan just texted me and said the press stuff. um, What what did she say? I mean, God, this phone is annoying sometimes. Um, She said, let's see, I put – this weather is going to cut down on media here, which means they might actually have to pay – um, okay, which means okay, yeah. There's not, there's not going. It doesn't look like there will be as much national media here today because it sounds like the weather may have prohibited some from, from traveling or whatever. So that's good though. That means they can pay more attention to the local media. Yes. Nothing against the national media, but sometimes I think in this Caitlin Clark story, the local media sometimes gets overlooked. Well, don't you? It, is, of course, has shifted. And I yeah. get Iowa has to cater to the national media. This is a once in a lifetime thing. But the local media, in fairness to them, Susan, Jeff Linder. I'll, They've been there with Caitlin since the beginning, sure. and they were there before Caitlin. They'll be there after. So sometimes I just want to point out that there is a good local media coverage. Okay. We will have a story coming up after this. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene uh, is uh, pushing a movement uh, now in the House to get uh, uh, Mike Johnson, Speaker Johnson, out. So they're going to. Because what did he, he want, he's uh, too woke, isn't he? I guess they want to oust him now. So we'll have well, that. And replace him with who? Like Charlie Kirk? <laughs> I don't know, honestly. Hello? Uh, hello. Hey, I had a, just a general women's basketball question. Okay. Um, so, so since a, a lot of people uh, uh, have said over the past few years, and specifically this year, that they really enjoy watching women's basketball, it's more uh, pure game than the men's. And so and then the rising popularity with Kate Clark and, and whatnot. My question is, um, so this last year, Big 12 men's basketball was widely viewed as, you know, the best possible or the best conference. Um, with the addition of the teams in the Big 10 coming next year, USC, UCLA, et cetera, et cetera, would the, do you think the Big 10 uh, women's will 
building easily be viewed as a premium conference? Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know if I would go that far. It's close. it's close. I mean, the SEC, if South Carolina continues to do what it's doing, but no, the Big Ten will be right there. I think you could make yeah. a case because adding those four teams is just going to make the Big Ten better because they're all four pretty good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank no, you it's a much. fair question, but there's really, really no question. right or wrong answer. It's so subjective. But I think the Big Ten's pretty close to being one of the best conferences right now. Your uh, nephew in the chat. What's he got going? Has he got another any breaking news? Uh, in quotes, Pat likes wood. <laughs> He's a... <laughs> He's, sure yeah. he, he was yeah. born in Pat 1986. <laughs> he said what? How old? He's 38. <laughs> yeah. He's not 14. What do you think of the fact that he's 38? You like that, man. <laughs> you like the fact that he's almost 40? He's got five kids. <laughs> Seriously? He's like Mr. Walton. Wow. Five. He's like the Waltons. Yeah. Did they have five kids? No, they had like eight, didn't they? How many yeah. kids did the Waltons have? Oh, I can't remember. Let's see. They had Mary eight, Ellen, John Boy, Jason, Ben, Jim Bob, and the How little do you... Elizabeth. <laughs> six. I, could, I couldn't tell That's, you. They had six kids. All did I know you say Mary them? Ellen? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. What else? <laughs> she was hot, though. Remember, she did the Playboy Centerfold. Did you ask her about that at the interview? She wouldn't talk about she it. She wouldn't talk about she it. She wouldn't talk about anything. And then I, when I brought up Scientology. Oh, she's one just, of them? Oh, yeah. 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 It just. Did she, she didn't want to talk about that either? No. I she, thought, she would not. Didn't want to talk about anything. So why did she do the interview? I don't know. Were you mean to her? Kind of. Was she mean to you? Yes. yes. I would love to have heard that. <laughs> Mary Ellen Walton and the oh, captain no, going was, at it. Uh, it was a hostile interview. See, that's, <laughs> that would have been good. Hostile yeah. with Mary Ellen Walton. I said, Judge, I want to treat this witness as hostile. <laughs> did you tell her that John Boy did you tell her that John Boy's not gonna protect you? <laughs> I just said, I you know, I this is what you've done. This is your body well, what of did, work. Did she never tell you what she wanted to talk about? Not really. And then what's her name? Eve Plum wanted to talk about everything but Jan Brady, right? Well, didn't she say to me, well, have you ever interviewed anyone before? <laughs> and I said, well, I've interviewed people that are cooperative, <laughs> if that's what you mean. Were you part of the interview? <laughs> no. No. You were just in the back listening? I was listening. Okay. And... <laughs> I, how did I move? When I was this? I had great hopes for the interview, and it went south in a hurry. <laughs> when was this? How long ago was this? Oh, God. We were in Coralville. Okay, so yes. about 15 years ago, probably? Yeah. 10, 15 10, years? Yes. Yeah, I, I do remember when it happened, because I, I got a kick out of the fact that you were arguing with Mary no, Lee Long. Yeah, it, it was hostile. But wasn't the... Eve, she didn't hang up, and I didn't hang up. Wasn't the Eve Plum article interview kind of hostile, too? Um, not like that. How could Eve Plum do an interview, though, and say, not, I don't want to talk about Jan Brady? What else has Eve Plum done? She, Nothing. Okay, I let her talk about this Saturday morning show she had. She wrote uh, a little uh, a book for children. Okay, sure. I let her talk about that and everything. But you can't not not and talk I, about Jan Brady. And I said, how much, you know, and I let her talk about that first. I didn't even bring it up. And then I said, how much, uh, when you were inspired by that book, did, does it go to your childhood and like you, you were know, trying to segue to the Brady Bunch a little yeah. bit, and she wanted nothing to do with it. No, I don't discuss. See, that, that would be annoying. I mean, she just said, "I don't that that's past." Well, you, <laughs> you don't. Know. Okay, but that's when you said, "Well, I've mentioned the two things you've accomplished okay. since then." Yeah, you're what not, else do you want us to talk about? Yeah, I said. So have you always been a bitch? <laughs> no, I I did not say that. You, did, you did wanted you, to though. Did it you was. call Mary Ellen a bitch during the interview? Did you use the B word? No. It has let up now. Look. Yeah. Yeah. So, but No, I did not use... I did do you not. still have the recording of that interview with Mary Ellen Walton anywhere? No. God, I don't think so. I would love to have heard that. I would have enjoyed that. <laughs> was it better than Alan Keyes? No. No, Alan Keyes, it was... Were you part of that, Suter? <laughs> no. Not at all. Alan that got Keyes. really nasty, didn't it? Yes. They were screaming at each other. Yeah. See, that would have been classy. Who was, was Anthony with you? Uh, yes. And he started screaming first. He started not so much a scream as as just kind of yelling at me and put, trying to put me in my place. And then I just I what mean, did you say that pissed him off? Screaming. What did you say that pissed him off? I said, "How can you 
be a f- uh, against affirmative action. Oh, okay. And again, I said, do you recognize the history that your people, it ain't your people, he goes. Yeah, I know. And a lot of my, and he said, a lot of my people are belly anchors. And it pissed me off. Well, I'm, yeah. No, no. You know, I mean, it's history. He's another, he was an uncle, you know, I, he might have, I might have called him an Uncle Tom. That probably would set him off. That set him off real good. I'm sure it probably Yeah, he did. didn't like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing he probably did not like being called an Uncle Tom. No. No, he did not. Yeah. I could see, I, you know, I'm not siding with him, but I could see that may have struck a nerve. Yeah. How about that governor ele- the governor nominee down in North Carolina? That Mark Robinson. That oh, guy's nuts. Oh, he's, yeah. he's just nuts. What they voted for him. Oh, I know. Now, and, he, and he may win. He may beat the Democrat, but, man, some of his views are just cr- I mean, when they start talking about 9-11 being a conspiracy, I'm done. I'm just, stuff like that, I just I have no interest in that. Yeah. Or I mean, the, we watched it. I know. I did watch it. I watched what? it on the phone with my sister. The whole thing, 9-11. Remember exactly? Well, the Sandy January Hook, 6th. child crisis actors. Come on. Well, what's, is, it, is this the woman you're talking about? Who? That got the Republican woman from North, South Carolina. Or well, there's the Republican nominee she, for governor, Mark Robinson, but I'm talking, the, you're thinking of the woman's school board. Yeah, and she wants... Biden, uh, she wants she Biden wants, and Obama dead. Yeah. Now, She's, she, in, she in confronted her in the parking lot, and I'll give this Propopez credit. He did not back down, no. but then she turned it into this big rant about how she's out to make the schools better because she's basically saying public schools suck, blah, 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 blah. But no... Um, and she's like, how do you know I said that stuff? And he's like, you tweeted it. You know? <laughs> I mean, she wants Obama and hung, hung executed yeah. for treason. And I'm just, the moment I see stuff like that, I'm done. I don't even want to even discuss That's anything with those people. Ridiculous. I mean, I don't think Trump should be hung for treason. I mean, why would I think Biden should be? I don't, it's just ridiculous. Makes no sense. It just makes no sense. But that's the world we live in now. North Carolina up on Michigan State, 5 to 2. 748 to go in the first women. Yeah, I'm not I don't know, we'll we'll see. I'm still not as convinced that the Big 10 was as good as we all thought it was this year. Well, we'll find out. We'll see because you had Iowa, but then like Michigan, Michigan State, those teams were all Michigan State was a pleasant surprise, but they still lost like eight or nine No, con- they they lost their they, share. Of games. Yeah, they lost their share of games. So it'll be interesting to see how good the Big 10 fares in this postseason. Oh, well, weather service says this is Ending snow is uh, the back edge of the snow. No, it stopped. Is uh, ending. You'll be done accumulating snow before eleven. I mean, it looks like the sun's almost coming out. Yeah, well, it is. Yeah. So, but yeah, no, no, no the snow's definitely stopped out here. So, well, it's, I can see it spitting a little bit, but it's yeah, it's nothing like it was. What's the temperature now? Thirty-two. Well, it's already gone up two degrees in like fifteen minutes. Yeah. Okay, so if this is as bad as it gets, we're fortunate. And you people up in Cedar Rapids, just, you know, be careful. North so Carolina. what's it like up in Waterloo and Dubuque? Yeah, and, a lot of snow. So, okay. But, but uh, wasn't it a narrow band? Yeah. Kind of like a snake. Kind of like a snake. Kind of like a snake slithering by. North well, Carolina up 7 to 2, 7 11 to go in the first. Soon going to give us a basket update until we're out the air. That uh, North Carolina, I wouldn't be surprised if North Carolina won that game. Would you? No, it's an eight nine. You never yeah, know. Yeah, you never Those know. Are close teams always. Yep. And that was the Drake. Wasn't that the Drake Washington State matchup last night? I think that was eight nine. Wasn't I know the Michigan State matchup was eight nine versus uh, Mississippi State. No, Drake. No, Drake was seven ten. Seven ten. And those are pretty similar, too, but they are. yeah, I just never felt like Drake was better than Washington State playing that game last night. The 8-9 in that bracket with Michigan State and Mississippi State. Yeah, and Michigan State won. He's, I mean, they were up by double figures for a big yeah. part of that second half. Played as well as I've seen them play. So, All right, well, anything else? anything else? Thanks again to Rivaldo Marshall for coming on, doing your first radio interview. Thought he did and great. I thought he did very well. Made me seem a little old with the Bob Marley answer, but maybe Captain Dry, maybe I got to move on. Got to move on. But I want to watch the movie. Are you going to watch the movie? Yes. Is it well, getting, when it comes is down. Is it getting good reviews? Uh, yeah. Who but, plays Bob Marley? Do we know? Uh-uh. Is it um, I don't know. Lenny Kravitz? Uh, I'm kidding. He, uh, Toby McCoy. No, uh, Tiger Campbell. The former, you know, the por- uh-huh. former. He, he, he looked Tiger. just like Bob Marley. He did. It'll be interesting, what though. about Toby McGuire? <laughs> <laughs> Where did be, Tiger Campbell end up going to? You know, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't think he's in the NBA. 
I don't think he made an NBA roster, but I could be wrong. But it'll be interesting to see how they handle, you know. I mean, Marley died of cancer, and I remember he injured his toe playing soccer, and it wouldn't heal. And that was the first That's sign that something yeah. was wrong. And, I mean, he... I mean, he. I mean, he died in 1981. I mean, that's a. Long, I was still in high school. It's incredible. I mean, where were you in 1981? Just starting the band. Just we starting were, the band. Uh, our first gig was February of 81. Wow. My junior year of high school. Yeah. Where were you in 81? <laughs> On the air. Hunter, where were you in 81? Junior year of college. Yeah. God, I'm old. I was a junior in high it school. This is remarkable. Tommy was eight. <laughs> hey. I got nominated by someone who people respect yeah. to be the uh, uh, in the uh, radio Iowa Radio Hall of Fame broadcast. Uh-huh. Hall of Fame. Well, good. So, how'd it go? I don't know. They just nominated me. There's, so, you're gonna nominate me again? No. What did that say? <laughs> no. I did it too many times. <laughs> got blown off. I, I done. I'm going to do you. You can nominate me. For what? Uh, I thought you were already uh, in the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for Iowa. Yeah, this is the broadcast. All the sport. No, that stuff. I, I went, I, when I was in newspapers. You just who, nominate who, me. Why would you care about something like that? I don't really. I mean, when I was in How newspapers. How many times have you nominated me? I did, I think, eight consecutive years. When I was in newspapers, I remember in 2000, I think I won the Iowa Sports Writer yeah. of the Year Award yeah. when I was at the Press Citizen. I went down to Salisbury, yeah. North Carolina. And I remember them telling me, they're like, hey, congratulations, but, you know, the best way that you can assure that you keep getting nominated and keep having a chance to win is to join our organization. And it was only like 50 bucks to join it for a year. But I didn't want to do it. I'm like, <laughs> what's the point? So you're saying yeah. if I join your organization, I'll win the award more than if I don't? That's I just didn't – that didn't mesh with me, so I just didn't care. Yeah. Hello. Hey, dude. Hey. Hey, I'm here to tell you that uh, one love – the Bob Marley movie is pretty good two hours. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, I look forward to watching it. Yeah. The most critical reviews have said it's just an infomercial for his songs, and I understand that because probably 60% of it is the songs playing over the scenes. But it's fine with me. It's pretty yeah. powerful. Yeah. It's pretty good. I love his music, so no, that will be... I look forward to it. Right, watch thanks. a music biography. It should be mostly about <laughs> yeah. music. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> yeah. That's good to hear. And did you ever hear about the time where Bob Marley was ambushed yes. and shot? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The, the day I was born. Really? Wow. Yeah. yeah did, wasn't Peter Tosh shot and killed? Yeah. He was ambushed yeah. from home, wasn't he? Yeah. 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 We did not ask for right, Valdo. Thanks, dude. We didn't ask Rivaldo about yeah. that. Yeah. Probably better that we didn't know it. There, I mean, there was a lot of violence. I mean, I don't remember. Out in the street, there is violence, <laughs> and there's a lot okay. of work to be done. Yeah. Yeah. Copyright. You too. Copyright. <laughs> Eddie Grant. <laughs> I played that yesterday. I heard it. I don't mind that. I don't dislike I, that song. Yeah. It's, it's an MTV okay. song. <laughs> what, Eddie Grant or Bobby McFerrin, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Which one? Uh, is? Eddie Grant. Eddie Grant. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I don't know. Listen, Bob. Bobby, Bobby McFerrin, McFerrin is incredible. <clears throat> is incredible, and we saw him at the Wesley United Methodist Church in Muscatine when when I think I remember you there. Telling. And he was absolutely phenomenal. Does all the sounds and everything. It, it, it just he was amazing. Well, he made some money off that song. Yeah. Oh yeah. But I mean, but Eddie Grant made was, some money off Electric Avenue. That I expect was, he did. That yeah. was really that was an MTV hit. Oh. Okay. Is YouTube going to shut us down? <laughs> yeah. There was only one note. They don't yeah, care about come that. In, come in from the front door. <laughs> but, again, everybody be safe out there. And, again, thanks again to Iowa 800-meter indoor NCAA national champion, Rivaldo Marshall, for giving us some time. Yep. And, Appreciate it. And, everybody, and I, I'll let you guys say go. Go Hawks. <laughs> <laughs>